Hey, Number Crunchers, it's good to be back with you. This is another in a series of videos about statics, and today I'd like to talk to you about how to find centroids of a composite shape. Now, this sounds pretty dry. The reason I use those words is because these are the words you normally see in a textbook. And a composite shape is just one that's made out of several smaller shapes. So the really simple example I have here is like an L shape, and it's made out of two boxes. It's made out of this box and this box. We're going to add up the effect of those two boxes and we're going to find the location of the vertical centroid using a very simple procedure. Okay? So, first thing to know, why would I want to know the centroid of that shape? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One is that you just might want to know where it balances. It may be uh, this thing is cut out of plate or something and you really do need to know where it balances. If you're taking strength of materials, this is the follow-on class to statics, the centroid is something called the elastic axis. The beam uh, basically has its effects concentrated along the elastic axis. So if you're dealing with beams, you'll need to know that too. So there's plenty of reasons to want to know what a centroid is. Let's start with the process. Okay? So I've got a shape here. Now these dimensions are in millimeters, but they could be anything. Before I get anywhere, we're going to have to use a coordinate system. Well, let's define one. We'll make x horizontal and y vertical, because you can't get anywhere without a coordinate system. And we're going to make that the origin right there. Okay, the origin is really important in these kinds of calculations, because you're going to come up with a number, and the number only means something if you know the, the origin of the coordinate system. So there's that. One other thing we're going to need, we're going to have to number these boxes. We need some way to keep track of which one is which. So let's just call that one box number one and that one box number two. Easy enough. So here's the expression for the location of a centroid. So if I say y bar, and that bar in this case means the location of the centroid, and you usually see it written in summation form, I'll get this out of my head out of your way here in a second. There. There's the expression. Well, y bar, this is the location of the centroids of the individual shapes. So y1 is the centroid of this box, the vertical centroid. y2 is the vertical centroid of this box. Now I'm showing you how to figure out the vertical location of the centroid. There is a horizontal location as well. And to figure that out, you use exactly the same expression, only in terms of x instead of y. So let's expand those out, because we've only got two boxes here. So that's going to be y bar 1 times a1 plus y bar 2 a2 over a1 plus a2. A. So, man, this, you can, you can work it out this way. It also works pretty well as a table. Let's do a table. So let's do this. Let's say y bar of i, and again, I'll get my head out of your way here. a i y bar i a i. OK, so there's what we've got right now. That's a table. And the thing is, if you've got a composite shape that's made out of more than two boxes, this table just has more and more rows in it. So let's, and then let's make this maybe i right here. So put one, two. All right, so far, so good. Got two boxes, there's two rows. Well, y bar of i, since these are rectangles, it's pretty easy to figure out where the vertical centroid is. For this one, it's halfway up, so it's going to be 50. Now, again, these are all in millimeters, and these numbers are going to get pretty big over here because millimeters are really tiny. Okay, number two, y bar is going to be 15. Well, a, 100 times 300, that sure looks like 3,000 to me. And 30 times 30, that must be 900. Okay, so far so good, right? Now let's see, multiply those together, and I think you get 150,000. Now this is going to be in millimeters, millimeters squared. This is actually going to be in millimeters cubed, because it's an area times a distance. Well, it's not actually a volume, but it's got units of volume. So this is millimeters squared, just to, and this is in millimeters, just to make sure we're not getting uh, uh, confused here. So 
over here we get 13,500, right? So let's go ahead and add this column and add this column because that's what this and this are. Should we do that? So to add this up, you get 3,900, and this is millimeters squared. This one you get 163500. Zero, zero. That's in millimeters cubed. Again, not because it's actually a volume, but just because it's a moment. It's an area times a distance. So the units come out millimeters squared. Well, let's see. Can I get this on my board? I think I can. That looks like that's going to be, let's see, that is that term. So 163500 zero, zero, millimeters cubed over 3900 millimeters squared. That's it. All I did was just add this column, add this column. That's the that's column number uh, number three right there. And that's column four. Divide this. Now, before we get to put a number down, let's get a sense of what we think it ought to be. Well, there's some area below the centroid of this. The centroid of this box is going to be right there at 50. Uh, 50 millimeters from vertical from the origin. That extra area down there means that the answer we get should be less than 50. Now it's not a huge area, so it may not be a lot less than 50. 40 might sound reasonable. So work this out, and I got my cheat sheet over there on my desk. It's uh, 41.92, whoops, 923, sorry. Let me, let me try that again. So it's 41.923 millimeters. Does that pass the sniff test? Yeah, I think so. We know that the, 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 the total, uh, the location of the total shape must be lower than 50. This is probably not much lower than 50. So yeah, that, that, that's, that works. That seems appropriate. So if you want to do this in, uh, for the horizontal direction, just repeat everything now in terms of x in, uh, instead of y. So we're looking at X locations of uh, centroids rather than Y locations of centroids works the same way. Hope this helps. We'll talk to you next time.